This is a follow-up video to my first video on how the Great Pyramid was built. It went viral. After doing some more research, I now have the answer. I will explain why these trial passages are so important and what is found here. The pyramid was originally built in this section. Here is the original layout. The Grand Gallery was not built all the way. That's why the blocks in and above the Queen's Chamber Corridor were made evenly to meet the above sections of the Grand Gallery ramp. Take a look at this picture or visit a 3D tour of the pyramid and you will see that the ramp was built in sections to meet the horizontal levels of the pyramid's construction. Yes, there are secret sand-filled chambers running next to the Queen's Chamber Corridor and the Queen's Chamber has yet to be built as it was lowered by sand. Why hasn't anybody inserted a camera where they drilled in this place where they discovered the sand? Others believe that there was some kind of elevator. The pyramid was built in square levels, higher on the vertical face, to create the correct angle of 51 degrees. Look at the entrance of the pyramid, and when I put the plan of the trial passage over it, Before these levels and the entrance was built, an anchor stone was inserted at the ascending and descending corridor junction. It is no longer there, and someone has replaced it with hard stone. This section here has been built with horizontal blocks up to this point here. This explains the girdle stones in the ascending passage. Here are some basic models I made to prove my theory. Here is the stage it's built to for the construction of the Queen's Chamber. The Grand Gallery was built to this level to place the blocks for the sand elevator and to build the resting place for the King. This is how the sand elevator works to build the king and queen's chamber. I have already gone through this in my previous video. This explains why the floors are so uneven. These are not doors who would fit through them. They are dragged up the air shafts during construction to lower the sand of the massive blocks. This is why sand and salt is found in the shafts and other areas cause it comes from a beach miles away. Hence the sand storage areas. This was not the only time sarcophagus were lowered by sand. This is where the air shaft doors started and explains why the holes in the shaft opening were not uniform in size. These rods did a lot of damage on the shaft floors. They did not cause the scratch marks up higher. Speaking from experience, no way you would lift them that high. This diagram shows why the Queen's Chamber air shafts never made it to the casing stones. Once the Queen's Chamber has been completed, the Grand Gallery continues up to the level of the King's Chamber floor. Remember before I said what is found here. I believe under the floor level near the king's chamber, you will find the king's real resting place. That is why the grave robbers dug here. They knew something. Also, there was a scan performed here that shows a void in this area. It's also right in the center of the pyramid. And I believe the Queen's resting place is here, 
as there is also a scan done showing a void underneath the Queen's Chamber running west to east. Again making it right in the center of the pyramid. This is how the Grand Gallery granite blocks were positioned from this level via the entrance. This is a rough animation showing how the granite blocks are moved up as the pyramid level increases. This is what I now believe was used to transport huge granite blocks up to the entrance of the pyramid. The big void which was discovered using scanners is a second grand gallery to create the king's chamber and above support beams. The small void behind the entrance was recently explored using a small camera. Here is a ramp system similar to the one at the entrance to the Grand Gallery. The Big Void, or Grand Gallery 2, is not directly above the first Grand Gallery. This is the stage of the pyramid that was completed to the top of the King's Chamber. A sand elevator was used like the same process as the Queen's Chamber. Leave a comment if you want me to leave a link to my models, so you can play around with them. This is how the first stage Grand Gallery Ramp and Counterweight System worked. As the blocks were raised up to the entrance, the counterweights began to lower down the middle tracks of the Grand Gallery and Ascending Passage. Once the blocks are positioned on top of the sand elevator, the counterweights are switched here by a rigger that explains why the robber's tunnel was probably a corridor at first. To get the counterweights back to the top of the Grand Gallery, sand or limestone, is used by sliding it down the descending passage to the subterranean chamber. That is why the ascending and descending corridors are almost perfectly square. When the sand or limestone reached the subterranean chamber, a worker from inside the escape shaft would release the ropes for the workers in the underground chamber. Look at this image here. The sand or limestone was lowered, pushed into the bottomless pit, into the Nile's underground water level. The blocks are raised up to the second grand gallery using the same process. Remember the anchor stone. Ropes are used to connect the second grand gallery and the ascending passage through the vertical shaft that was shown in the trial passage. The anchor stone connects all ropes to each ascending and descending passage. I need your help. How do you think they got the blocks past the anchor stone? Leave comments below. Once the, the limestone or sand weight have been lowered to the subterranean chamber, the sled is pulled back to the start of the descending passage. What do you think? Check out my previous video that has some other bits. Thank you.